Hey there everyone, it's Vera Wild and I am going to talk a little bit more about some of the rather significant um, changes and shifts that have come about uh, in my life. So I am, um, I am on a hormone regimen, um, I am on ho hormone adjusting medication. Uh, specifically, I'm on these suckers. So before I get uh, too much detail into these, um, a little bit of context. I have said in previous videos that I it is not my intention to transition to live full time as a woman. That actually hasn't changed. I still don't intend to transition to live full time as a woman. Um, I do con still consider myself to be gender fluid. I am comfortable presenting male. There's sometimes I prefer it. Um, so what I am on, because um, normally anyone intending, anyone a born male, assigned male at birth, who is planning a transition that includes uh, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, there are two components to that. Um, for most people, and that is anti-testosterones and estrogen. I am not on estrogen. I am on anti-testosterones. That's, that's these suckers. So, um, I'll explain sort of the theory as to why I am, and then talk a little bit about my experience being on these. So, um, my gender fluidity is something that I have been very open about with my primary care physician, with my doctor, and in talking about trying to find a better sort of balance in my life, what we're aiming for and what the goal of, of me being on the anti-testosterones is, is to try and set my default to something closer to a proper neutral. And by that I mean was that prior to this, regardless of where my own sense of self was, whether it was leaning more masculine, leaning more feminine, my default starting place was always heavily masculine because that was physiologically what I was. Obviously, you know, physically, I'm still male. Um, that And that I, did, that, I really don't ever see changing as far as, um, genitalia is concerned so you know but you, you know I I had facial hair to deal with I, ha I have all I have um, all these things my my inner workings my hormone balance was fundamentally male so the idea with the anti testosterone is to sort of set my neutral set my um, my standard starting place my my normal position at a proper neutral as opposed to leaning masculine, which makes presenting more feminine harder because I have further to come. Whereas if the starting place is more in the middle, it makes it easier to go one way or the other. So that was the that's the thinking um, that we have going into this. So I have been on this particular dosage, um, and th this is a spironolactone is what I'm on, which is actually, it's a medication that can be used for a fairly wide number of things, um, including um, uh, bringing down blood pressure, um, bringing up potassium levels, and, uh, and a whole bunch of other things. But one of its effects is to dampen testosterone production. So I've been on this dose is on 100 milligrams for almost a year. Um, and that was gradual. We had to work up to that because the main concern for me going on these was my potassium going too high because um, I mentioned one of the uses for it, one of the medical applications for it is to bring up someone with low potassium. But if you already have normal potassium going on this, there is a risk that your potassium becomes elevated, potentially even to a degree that could make you quite ill and quite sick. So, I I should have mentioned this up front. 
Yeah, I did say I'm doing this with my doctor. This is all, this is prescription. This is all under the supervision of my doctor. Do not seek these medications out and start messing with them on your own. Like I was it was months of gradual building to get to this dosage because I had to go in every month and get my blood tested so that they could make sure that this stuff wasn't killing me. <laughs> so it's it's scary when you th when you think about it. But um, we we went into this very gradually. And then, as I said, I've now been on the 100 milligrams for um, almost a year. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've experienced with that being the case. So firstly, let's talk side effects. So potential side effects with spironolactone include drowsiness, dizziness, lightheadedness, stomach upset, diarrhea, diarrhea nausea, vomiting, and headache. And I am incredibly lucky because I have experienced almost none of these. Um, I have had, um, I've had no issues with the potassium. Uh, as I said, I was tested uh, as that went along. I've had, I think, two instances of lightheadedness and like very brief. Um, and so that there was that. Um, the diarrhea, there's a little bit of that. Basically, I get like a little mild stomach upset um, and, and digest, digestive system upset um, early in the morning when I first take it, but that passes fairly quickly. So, but that's about it. I've been very fortunate to avoid um, the other um, potential um, side effects. So that's been very lucky. So let's talk about um, the other effects, the intended effects. So my um, body hair, which was already very sparse. Um, so like my my arms, I have never shaved my arms in my life. This is always what they've been like. And um, my chest hair, um, you can't, I mean, you probably can't see from there, but it's always just been light and patchy and not a lot there. But what little body hair I have um, is lighter, it's finer, it comes in more slowly. Um, at the, I still shave my pits, but as far as my chest goes, I just pluck at this point because that lasts a little bit longer and it's, and it's just, just dealing with stragglers at this point. So there's that. Um, that was a significant part of it. Um, one of the concerns with anti-testosterones, um, whether you supplement with estrogen or not, there's always going to be some potential concern with, um, sexual function, which I, uh, also thankfully I've been able to avoid. So I don't want to, obviously I'm not going to go into graphic detail on this because I don't. I don't talk about that level of stuff, but a long story short, my own um, sexual desire has gone down slightly um, in so much as these days I am less likely to initiate um, that kind of activity. However, once it is initiated, I am as I am very quick to become interested and I am physically as responsive as I've always been. So um, thankfully I haven't had any issues as far as that goes. There is a possibility of sterility um, going on anti-testosterones. For me that wasn't a concern because I was planning to and now actually have gotten a vasectomy anyways. So that was moot in my case. Um, the other uh, sort of major notable, noticeable thing is um, breast growth. I have had a, um, a little of that. Not a lot. Um, and I don't, don't know how. So I am not in, um, 
I I don't have I don't have a bra and I don't have breast forms on right now. What you see there, um, that's me. <laughs> So the the breast growth breast growth was something that um, took me a little while to be certain of, partially because I uh, am not at my ideal weight. So it was a while before I felt comfortable saying that it wasn't just man boobs. <laughs> I don't like that term, but you know what I mean, where a guy is just out of shape and it's just sort of like a little floppy up there. It's sort of the telltale sign as far as the difference goes is if you start getting, again, for lack of a better term, a, a bit of under boob. When it starts developing, when you get curvature down here, so it's not just like sort of flopped, um, flopping and around and like almost sort of like flapjack sort of thing when the, when there's an actual underside curvature um, that's that's an indicator so um, I do have that going on um, it's not even uh, left side is uh, to me it's very noticeable um, I've, I've been assured it's not as noticeable to other people uh, left side's bigger than the right it's um, at this point, because I have actually taken measurements um, for myself, um, I am a solid A cup, um, but that is still pretty minor. So if I, it, so like going to work, I still, I still present uh, masculine at work, and um, at at this point, uh, if I I can do one of two things, I can either wear a loose top. Um, which will help, or I can wear a top uh, that is tight enough that it kind of squishes it down, and then it just looks looks like pecs, and and that's fine. Um, I'm not anticipating any further development on the dosage of that that I'm on because um, spermatolactone itself doesn't really um, encourage breast growth, strictly speaking. Um, but what happens is, is that testosterone as a hormone, it is one of the things that determines that what is going on up here is musculature as opposed to fatty deposits. So having significantly less testosterone in my system means that um, this part of my body is not getting instructions to be muscle anymore, which means it is turning into fatty deposits, which is what is giving me the small degree of breast growth that I now have. Um, again, I think I think I notice it um, a fair bit more than other folks do. Um, although, you know, I've, I've had it commented on, you know, by, by people who know me. Um, uh, the one other thing that I will mention, I don't know how typical this is, um, nipple sensitivity. That um, I got, that kind of shot through the roof. To be, um, to be completely blunt about it, yeah, that um, I, I they were never especially sensitive before. They're actually quite um, now, not in a bad way, not like in a pain way, but definitely in a. Um, just increase sensitivity <laughs> way. Um, and also with sort of a general enlarging of the nipples as well. Again, a little bit more prominent on the left than on the right, <laughs> of course. So that's sort of where things are and um, what is that, what that's all meant. Um, whether or not I'll stay on this particular hormone regimen, whether um, I'll adjust it, look into something else, um, you know, supplement it with other things, dial back on this and introduce estrogen, drop this all together and introduce estrogen, just stay on this, I don't know. I'm more open to the possibilities of the, of the future as being fairly open, um, I think then than I had been previously, where I, where I tended to just put my foot down and go, no, I'm not going to transition to a woman, and I still don't believe that that's where I'm going. I'm, you know, 
I don't feel as comfortable being like definitive about it, but I, I, I don't think so. But um, in any case, that's, that's where I am right now. And um, it's good. I feel good. I feel um, more at ease and more comfortable with me. And that is, um, that is no bad thing. So thanks so much for listening, everybody. Um, don't forget, hold on. Ah, I have a book. It's called Skirting Gender, uh, Life and Lessons of a Crossdresser. It's available on Amazon, uh, both in kin on the Kindle store as an ebook or as a um, physical paperback. So uh, there'll be links below for that as well. Thank you very much for listening and uh, letting me sort of bring you up to speed on some of the big changes of my life. So until next time.